Welcome to the first episode of This Old Mead. Okay, so, a couple times along the way, you've seen me taste this. This is our pineapple mead that I made. It predates the channel, okay? It predates good record keeping. I mean, look at how tiny this note is, okay? I didn't keep good records, I will be honest. And this is what has occurred. The first couple times I tasted it, this, it was not good. It was a little bit rough. The last time, after three years, it was starting to be okay. Now it's four years plus, see how it is. But a little bit about it first. It started with a 1.116 original gravity. It's made from pineapple juice and honey, okay? I don't remember the brand of either one because, you know, I didn't write it down. It took what looks to be about a month before it finished out, almost, well, three weeks or so. And at the time, I was not real good about readings and things like that, believe it or not. And um, I estimated it low. I was wrong because I was using a refractometer. Why, don't ask me, but I did. And I'm estimating this to be somewhere in the 16% range at this point. That's the best estimate I have. It could be as low as 14, it could be as high as 18, but let's just call it 16 because it's a nice round number. First, it is quite clear. It's a beautiful. And it has a really nice color. Color and clarity, it's, it's really pretty. Looks like scotch. It does, it really does, it looks like whiskey. And then when you smell it, kind it's, of a caramelized it's pineapple. like a caramelized pineapple. <laughs> yeah. Not burnt, just caramelized, lightly browned. Not altogether unpleasant, but not super pleasant either. It reminds me of ham. You know how sometimes yeah. they put those big pineapple yeah. slices on <laughs> Now I know this is very dry too. So that's, that's another aspect to it that's kind of interesting. Um, it's a pretty early brew. All right. You ready? Going for it. I didn't want to spit it out. That's a plus. Yeah. I'm... It, it tastes like pineapple upside down cake. It does. That's exactly what it tastes oh, like. That I little bit of charred, so long. a little bit of charred, syrupy pineapple mm -hmm. at the bottom. That's what this really tastes like. Nope. A little bit of honey notes coming through. It's it's a little on the thin side. I will say that it's not super rich and thick like a lot of our meads are. Um, For me, the first sensation I'm getting is that sweet pineapple. Yeah. Like the syrup part yeah. that you get for pineapple. Um, and then it goes into kind of a puckery, bittery thing yeah. uh, that I get often with citrus. Pineapple has some acids in it. And then it goes more into the complex honey notes that aren't necessarily sweet, but more of that... The fermented honey thing. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it improved a bit more. I will say that. This is not still not one of my favorites ever. I, I like it. Well, there you go. It's it's better than I think it is then. It's not one of my favorites, but it's not horrible, okay? It, um, it's still a little bit harsh to me. It's harsh and smooth at the same time. Yes, I, I, yes. It's difficult to describe. I enjoy the forward end more than I do the back end. And, and the very last bit it's unbalanced is really what it is. It's kind of a cleansing, almost astringent. Yeah. I can only determine that that's from the alcohol. Mm hmm Oh, you can taste the alcohol in this one. This one's got some punch. But it's like segregated towards the, <laughs> the end. Yeah, it, it's kind of discordant because you have the, the caramely sweetness of the pineapple and the honey, and then you have like an acidic bite at the end. And those two things don't seem to play well together. And because they're not coming through at the same time, they're actually separate. Yeah, they're very it's separate. very, there's a dichotomy of flavors. Mm. Um, that's right. I know the big words every once in a while. <laughs> um, it's not bad, but it's not my favorite. Like, I don't know that I would reach for this so often. Obviously, we've had it for four and a half years and I haven't drank it all yet. But now I really want pineapple up, so I don't care. We can probably make that happen. <laughs> Um, 
the more I drink of it, and I know everybody laughs at me when I say this, I'm not drunk. This is the first alcohol I've had, um, and it's not that strong. Um, the more I drink of it, the more I'm growing accustomed to the flavors, and it's growing on me a little bit. Yeah, I think um, part of the separation, if you keep drinking, then you're going back to the front again. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Your, so. your palate is now accustomed to it. Right. And so the alcohol is not as much of a deal. So it's not as separate, and you're just like, oh, yeah. Definitely getting more of the caramelized pineapple flavors than yeah. the pineapple, though. It doesn't taste like fresh pineapple at all. No, no. No, this it's cooked pineapple, cooked without pineapple. a doubt. Yeah. Even like roasted on the grill pineapple. Yeah. Um, With a bit of that char, even. So what would you want done to this to make it a little better? Ah, that is a good question. Don't finish that because what we're gonna do, here, I have an idea. Mm. What? I would want to oak this. We could oak it, not today. Right. I was, I was thinking of something we could do right this minute. Right this minute. I'm gonna add some honey to it and see if sweetening it up mm. changes the flavor. Give me a sec. All right. Okay, I have here some honey. I'm going to add in an unmeasured amount. <laughs> per science. <laughs> Putting in that much. Yeah, that's about maybe a teaspoon or so. Not, not too, too much. Set that to the side. And I have the world's tiniest whisk to mix it up with. And yes, it went cloudy, because that's what happens when you mix honey into a finished product. I'm... I'm but, estimating that I just raised the gravity probably like 10 to 20 points. So now before we sample this, I want to mention something that I thought of while Brian was getting the honey. And that's some of our older meads that we've revisited. We had a blueberry and a cranberry that were both really good. Those were like our stellar... They're older than this one. First off meads. And so we drank a bunch of it and then we left a little bit in the bottle because we're like, oh, we want to save that. And that was before we realized that doing that was actually a really bad thing to do. Oh, I knew. I just did it anyway. And we should have just drank it all. So then eventually, I don't remember how much time lapsed, we went back to those little bits that were in the bottle. Uh-huh. That's his poker face. And it wasn't good. It was yeah. really, really sad. It oxidized. And it seemed like... Oh, that was such a waste because it was so lovely. However, this just keeps on getting better. And the bottle... There's about that much head, head space in it. Yeah. We've just been taking a little sample yeah. off once a year. So it's not really a problem. Go ahead and taste that. All right. It's either really good or really bad. Cause he's, I'm not giving away he's, nothing. He's, I'm thinking it's really good, so I'm okay with that. I would say it improved it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's really good. If I had to put a score on this, original as it was out of the bottle, it's like a four for me. It's just not all that great. It's not my favorite thing. This elevates it a little bit. I still think oaking it, and yeah, I know like I've, five and a half. I've said this many times, oh, oak okay. it. But because we have that discordancy that was our biggest issue, I, I need think- some tannin. Oaking is going to blend, going to meld those notes together. It'll improve the mouthfeel. It'll give it a little yeah. thickness and richness, um, a little sweetness and tannin. It's very acidic. That's yeah. the problem. And pineapples do have some acidity to them. So that's that's yeah. where it all came from. And, and hey, that little at the bit time, of... we didn't really know. And I didn't, you know, I, I didn't particularly care either because yeah. we weren't teaching people how to make mead. We were just experimenting with making mead. And made now... tons of wine, but we hadn't made mead yet. So. And now here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? It definitely improved it. I would say now it's like five and a half to six. We are eventually gonna bite the bullet and try a pineapple something again. I don't People know. People want us to make tapachi. And we've been asked that a lot. I think we should just do it. Okay. It's it's a relatively simple one. We could do a, a tapachi, we could do a pineapple mead, we could do a pineapple cider, we could do pineapple wine. All the things pineapple. I, I mean, really. So you, need, you need to grow pineapples. Okay. I had Are you this finish that? beautiful baby pineapple, and then a squirrel ate my pineapple. Yeah, I know. And I heard about it for like four days. She was really upset. I mean, I don't blame her. I'd be upset too. Because you know how long it takes to grow a freaking pineapple? It's like years. I mean, 
Yeah, two years to grow one pineapple. You know what I say? Go buy it at the store. <laughs> it's so much easier. But if you do buy one in the store, watch my video on how to grow pineapples and you can grow one from your store-bought one. Absolutely. And then you have two in so, two years. That's the summation of our pineapple mead. Four plus years in the making. See you again in one year for the five year tasting of the pineapple mead. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.